Let's take a look at uh, what a Rust development environment would uh, look like in in real life, like with a real example, you're building command line tools. Now, this is different in many uh, in many ways from Python. Uh, so uh, unlike Python, where I didn't cover specifically how to install it, I will cover how to install these with Rust. Now, uh, just a quick reminder that installing Rust is only needed for development uh, environments. Once you build, once you uh, release a binary once that's uh, already created, then you don't need to have Rust installed in your target systems. Now, this is a perfect uh, reason why you will want to prefer something like Rust when building command line tools. It is because you will not have to use tools like curl or uh, this, uh, this call to the shell to install your Rust environment. So. Uh, let's uh, let's go through how that would look like. Uh, let's actually uh, go ahead and copy this whole command here. And I say uh, Control C, and then I'm going to open up a terminal. And I already have installed Rust. I'm going to paste this, and you will see that it will go through certain prompts. Uh, now let's uh, let me scroll all the way to the top. Welcome to Rust. It will create a couple of uh, directories. Uh, one is the Rust up. Uh, cargo, which we'll go into uh, later details, uh, into details later once uh, we cover some of the things that happen there with Cargo, which is a, one of the tools that we will use to install, build, and create dependencies and and all of that uh, good stuff. And then you'll have a bin directory, which will be added to your path, which in fact is actually covered right here, where your uh, shell environments will get updated so that you have access to those paths. Now. Like I said, I already have that installed. In your system, it might look slightly different. If you're, use, if you're using Linux, in this case, I'm using OS 10, but it doesn't matter if you're using Linux, you might be tempted to use the package manager. I highly suggest you don't and you use Rust up like I'm, I'm, I'm doing right here uh, for my system. Now, uh, I already have it installed. I'm not gonna go through all of the steps. You can go through that. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna select number three and cancel the installation and be done with that. Next, uh, what I want to show you is uh, I'm going to come back to uh, all of these uh, shell environments and I'm going to close them up for now. But uh, we're again in Visual Studio Code. That's what I recommend. The extensions for Visual Studio Code are uh, pretty important because they'll allow you to uh, use uh, Rust and develop Rust. So uh, Visual Studio Code has the ability to install an extension here, and in this case is the Rust Analyzer. So let's quickly search for it. And it's this one uh, right here. So I'm gonna click on the Rust Analyzer. I already have it installed. If you don't have it installed, you'll, you'll um, be able to select that from here. And it will give you very good feedback when you're developing uh, beyond just code completion, which you also get with the Python extension when you're writing Python and doing some auto completion. Uh, that's fine, but you will get uh, also the references and some of the searches that are available for your own code as well. And uh, you'll get documentation when you're hovering over some types and uh, even some definitions as well. Now, uh, beyond the Rust Analyzer, which will also check for any problems you may have with your code, I also want to make sure that you have a GitHub uh, Copilot installed. Now, if you're a student, you can get this for free, but uh, otherwise you will have to pay for the service. So if you have it installed, it's not only require you to have it installed, but available for your account. And once you have it installed and ready to use, you'll have this little logo here at the bottom that will indicate that you're good to go and allow you to write faster. If Rust, if you're comfortable with Python and not with Rust and you want to try Rust, well, uh, GitHub Copilot is an excellent, excellent way to uh, try to, to get to where you want to be with uh, solid recommendations and code suggestions that might allow you to go faster. Now, um, beyond that, let's explore very quickly. I'm not going to go into details as to what the code is actually doing. I'm going to open up the file explorer, some of the components that we're going to be dealing with. 
beyond the readme and the license, uh, there are a couple of cargo files. These cargo files are related to packaging. I'm defining my project uh, dependencies here. Those happen automatically with a special cargo command that we'll go into details later. Uh, then the cargo.log lists the dependencies. I have the dependencies and freeze them to exactly what are exactly the things that are needed for my project to work. The git ignore is just a regular uh, version control system uh, git ignore that also gets auto generated by cargo. You, you can still, you can now see that the cargo is basically everywhere, right? Like this was automatically generated by cargo. We have the cargo log, the cargo toml file. Now, actually, I skipped over that, but it defines my package, which is uh, block RS, similar to the Python project that we saw before. This will use the same underlying example, the same problem that we're going to solve. Next, you're going to have a target directory. When you're building your Rust binaries, those will get in there. And um, there's nothing to, to that directory other than all the files that will get produced when you're building, you're compiling, you're creating your binaries. Most of the, the components, most of the files that you will be working with are in SRC. That's where your Rust files will go. And uh, optionally, you can have a directory called examples where you can put in uh, things that you may want to um, provide examples for your project, even your command line tool, and we'll have those in this project certainly as well. So let's very quickly take a look at main.rs. I'm not going to go through the details of the project just yet. Uh, this is just an introduction to the development environment. So let's see what are some of the things that we're going to be doing here. Now, I mentioned uh, uh, three things that we're going to do with Cargo. Uh, I didn't say exactly what are those. Uh, one is format, the other one is clippy, and the other one is check. So uh, let's assume that without going into the details of the actual code and what, what is actually happening here, let's open up a terminal and I'm going to minimize this. And if I say which cargo, I can uh, verify that cargo is indeed installed. So the first thing, the first thing that we're gonna do is uh, use cargo format, and the name might in the or cargo FMT actually for short. And what uh, that does, I'm gonna close the file explorer here. Uh, what that does is that it gives you a normalized way of uh, formatting your code. So let's assume I have that. Uh, oops, uh, have that right there. Uh, sorry, I scroll over there. Uh, let me let me move this out of the way. So I have like let's say like on purpose this very odd very very odd uh, formatting formatting here let's see let's see what we can do so let's let's assume hey i have no idea about rust and i'm making some changes here if i do cargo fmt which is cargo format uh, everything you will get uh, normalized to a style that is common for Rust code. So it gives me confidence that even if I'm not doing things quite right, Cargo Format can make that happen for me. Uh, next up is uh, Clippy. So I'm going to say clear and I'm going to say Cargo Clippy and I type that in. It will give me suggestions as to what are some of the things that I can try. So in this case, I have on line four something. I mean, this is not an error, but it's telling me, hey, you should probably want to use char here if you want to split the command. So how about we try to implement this? Uh, let's go to all the way to line four, which is right here, and then make that change very quickly. I'm going to save that uh, and I'm going to run Cargo Clippy. And Cargo Clippy said, hey, you know, everything looks pretty good and uh, you don't need to do anything else. Well, that sounds great. And uh, that is how you can make sure that you're doing things right, especially if you're not very used to Rust. But even if you are a pro in Rust, I highly recommend you use some of these uh, uh, calls to Cargo that will allow you to get that done. Now, Clippy and Format and, and all these sort of things will get installed in your system when you do the Rust up command that I showed earlier. And the last one I want to show you is a Cargo Check. So Cargo Check will be a, a way of not compiling, but car, uh, Rust will uh, try to see if there's any problems. So say, for example, if I add a semicolon here and try to save that and run Cargo Check again, we'll get errors with very fast errors with 
uh, with a cargo check. Now, uh, one of the things is that the Rust Analyzer extension will call those out. So you can see here, I'm getting a red curly underline. If I hover uh, and I say, what's, uh, let's see, what's going on here with this underline, you'll see that I have mismatched types. That is a problem with Rust. Uh, no, not that it's a problem with, it's a problem with my code that Rust is telling me where it, where it's uh, coming from, and that is coming from the Rust analyzer. So the Rust analyzer is giving me some examples. This is perfect, and it allows me to do something there. So if I hover over the semicolon, you can see that uh, I'm saying, "Hey, remove this semicolon to return its value. Don't 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 try to do that." So I'm like, "I'm gonna." remove that, save it, and very quickly everything goes away. Behind the scenes, it is Rust Analyzer doing all that work for me and uh, making sure that my code uh, is well and is doing good and it will actually compile and giving me suggestions when not to do. So that's very quickly an initial overview of your development uh, environment, the, kind of like the workflow that you would have without going into detail as to what the tool is doing uh, on Rust specifically and uh, taking advantage of the README and all of the documentation that we've uh, shared. So that's it. I highly suggest you use Rust up. The command is right there. Otherwise, you can go to the actual web website, which is rustup.rs.